Alright, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to your first playthrough. So, the goal is simple. Sell things. Actually, you know what, before I sell things, I'm gonna build and see how much I need to sell. Because I want to build this Marauder. I want to, like, actually fully build it. So. We are... I'm actually going to hold off on the engine core for a second. Because... The idea... Is that this is going to be... A crazy extreme range sniper mech. What I am giving it is a void system with a signature damper. I do need to give a core, so for now I'll do that. And yeah, let's just let's just go over the prototype heat sink kit. So, prototype heat sink kit. Minus 20% heat generated by weapons fire. And it also, by virtue of being an engine heat sink. Or uh, a better heatsink kit. Uh, do, do, do. If we bring ourselves up to the normal 10 engine heatsinks. Obviously, they're not going to stay side torso like that. But So, just the heatsink prototype kit and engine heatsinks is minus 40. Which, yes, that's considerably less than minus 30. But you also have the minus 20% weapon heat generated. But, when you remove engine heat sinks, like having a small core, so you have more external, it actually stacks up the additional minus 2% heat generated by weapons fire for every single one that's outside of it. So the idea here is that we use so many protos that we are able to just blast with our big, heavy... PPCs. I thought we had two heavy PPCs. Did I use one somewhere? Because we don't want the heavy PPC risk. It has damage fall off. Like, yes, it's 90 damage. And it falls off to 60 at max range. But we're not going to want to get close. We're going to be hiding in the bushes far away. That's the whole idea. Reduced visibility, void system, signature damper. If we're far enough away, they will never see us. And they cannot shoot us. And we will never run out of ammo. But I do not, <laughs> I do not appear to have the PBCs I thought I had. Also slots. Um, because of the voice system and signature damper, I'm not going to be able to put a heavy PPC. Ooh, I can go. Ooh. That's interesting. Ah, uh, but then I... If I go heavy PPC, PPC, I will not be able to use... Okay, hold on. What about... Uh, PPC capacitor... PPC capacitor. And then... Can I... There we go. What? No, that's definitely wrong. In any case, um, yeah, the, the idea here is, <laughs> obviously, we're not going to go with the minus six engine heat sinks. But even with a heavy PPC, PPC, and a PPC Donnell with two PPC capacitors, we're only generating 100, P uh, 100 heat. That's it. That's it. That's crazy. I love it. Unfortunately, that does raise the question of... How big of an engine core are we going to need here? See, yeah, the 
the more the more engine core we have the more heat sinks it will have up to 10 and that brings our cooling to 105 alpha strike 84 cooling so then if we give ourselves a clan exchanger which we only have exchanger double pluses I was specifically thinking Clan Exchanger because the uh, higher flat cooling, um, like the extra, it, so Exchanger Double Plus is 5% additional heat generated by weapons fire reduction, but at the expense of 6 flat cooling. So the 6 flat cooling, because we have so much percent reduction already, would have been more valuable, I think. That said, I mean, oh, and uh, yeah, also... Clan XL. And then... Uh, how much do we need to actually fully max the armor? Except back. We don't really need to super max the back. If something gets behind us, we messed up. Um, oh, structure upgrade. We do not have the required seven slots, do we? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we do. We do. Dreadnought Gyro is actually really interesting, specifically because we would be in forests a lot. And just 10% damage reduction. That said, there's also arguments we made for just not getting hit. <laughs> just don't get hit. So, with narrow low profile and the gyro defense plus, we'll have plus two defense, plus one evasion. On top of our insanity stealth. Dreadnought's also an extra slot, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's an extra slot as well. So, definitely gyro defense here. Hmm. I mean... We have a heat delta of negative 5, which is not bringing into consideration the stealth, which is bad, actually. So, the void system alone is 10% and 10 flat. Signature Damper is 5% and 3 flat. So, 15%-ish. So, about an extra 12. So, we'd be at a heat delta of 7. And then the extra 13 flat. So, we're at a heat delta of 20. If we have a bigger engine core, we could drop in engine heat sinks plus 2. Which would give us an extra 8 flat. But that's not super va- Ooh, you know what? A heat bank actually is brilliant here. Minus 6 flat. That actually helps a lot. Ah, but then we want the IFF jammer for the stealth. So, if we were able to find the tonnage for it. If we were able to find the tonnage for it. We could go with a... What kind of core would it take? It would take a 300 core. Yeah. So it would take a 300 core. Engine heat sinks plus two. Um, instead of the heat bank, because the... Again, clan exchanger will give us the same flat six. And this will allow us to go with the IFF jammer. Actually, I think we have an IFF jammer mark three floating around somewhere. I need to look for that. Uh, also, yes, we absolutely need electronic warfare in here. So... And then gunnery to reduce the misfire chance while using the capacitor. Uh, tactics, because we don't have anything better. Range finder, absolutely. Um... Sensor Sniper. 
yeah, this is uh, this is falling apart. And I would really like the clan fire control. Ah, battle computer heat. Battle computer heat helps us so much, right? Not really, actually. Because the battle computer heat is percent, not flat. So yeah, we're down now to an alpha strike of 79. And remember, this is 79, including the capacitors. So with an alpha strike of 79, our stealth is still generating about 12, and then another 13 flat, so 25, which means this exchanger double plus becoming a clan exchanger would actually, I think, get us to heat neutrality even with the PPC capacitors. And we could even go back to computer optics. I don't really care about critical. Like, optics and heat are literally the two battle computers I care about. So that gives us night vision. That gives us bonus accuracy up to 810, which, yeah, that, that covers it. That covers all of it. Um, yeah, fixes our heat problems. Bonus if they're overheating. So this is actually, this is actually a great mech to drop with any of our heat uh, generation mechs. And the improved cold shot with the offensive push. We're not going to be trying any hand sh headshot shenanigans, but we are definitely going to be going for, like, uh, side torso on XL engines and things like that. So, obviously the PPC capacitors will come back. Obviously. We've, we've managed to adjust for the heat for it. But that would give us base without the capacitors 175 in three big pinpoint hits. Hmm. Alternatively... Is there a way that we could no, there's no way we make there's no way we make light PPCs with capacitors work. Unless Ooh. Ooh, okay, hold on. What's better? A PPC with a capacitor or a heavy PPC? ECM jamming of 1, min 90, max 720. Min 90, max 720. ECM jamming of 3. And then the PPC capacitor, plus 25 damage, so that would bring a regular PPC up to the same damage as the heavy PPC but at plus 30 heat and misfire chance. So it makes more sense to actually just bring heavy PPCs with capacitor. Actually, is that is that possible? If we had another heavy PPC, first of all, actually heavy PPC risk is four slots. Same, okay. So, if we put the PPC capacitor on the heavy PPC, at which point the PPC, the heavy PPC is doing 100 damage pinpoint. And the light PPC is primarily, it's showing 55 because it's messed up. Uh, it should just be showing 30. But, uh, here, I'll do this. Um, so then the light PPC in each arm is primarily for the higher accuracy with the evasion ignore and the ECM jamming, which further strengthens our stealth. If we're hitting somebody with even just the two PPCs per turn and missing with both the heavy PPCs with capacitor, we won't be doing the majority of our damage, but we will be scrambling their sensors.
I like it. Do we have the slots? Do we have the tonnage? So it's 10 tons for a heavy PVC. So no. No, we do not have the tonnage for that. Do we have the tonnage? Clan ER PPCs is what I want. They're lighter, they're less slots. They're also 75 damage pinpoint. Which, with the PPC capacitor, will boost it up. Actually, they might be 80. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen one. But if I had a clan ER PPC with a light PPC in each arm, this would be beautiful. And I think it would actually also run cooler. Honestly, if we can manage the heat, if, if, um... How would we manage the heat? Really, the only slot that I could actually free up here, realistically, is dropping a heat sink. <laughs> as ridiculous as that is. Yeah, if I drop a heat sink, I can then bring the light PPC as well. I'd need to drop a ton of armor, but that's fine. That's completely fine. Uh, our heat efficiency would be problematic. Uh, we'd get we'd get an extra 12 heat from our stealth, plus an extra flat 13, so 25. But we can manage a heat delta of 9, especially with capacitors that we can turn on and off based on, like, fail chance and stuff, or, you know, misfire chance and the shots and whatnot. And as soon as we found... As soon as we find a pair of clan ER PPCs, this build gets exponentially better. Or just another... No, another heavy PPC doesn't really work. Well, I guess it does. It would just combine the light PPC and the PPC into a single heavy PPC. It would still bump up the 75 pinpoint into 100, and it would boost the combined two ECM jamming into a three with the single shot. There's multiple ways we can improve this. But yeah, I think that's actually the play. And we're going to start off shaving off back armor, because if something gets behind us, we messed up. And then we're just going to kind of... Trim legs a little bit, I think. Something like that. This is all too valuable. If we get shot in the back, it's our own fault. I deserve to lose it if I get shot in the back with this particular build. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right. 3.6 million, 30 days. But that, that is a beautiful mech. PPC capacitor is attached to that PPC. PPC capacitor is attached to the heavy PPC. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is not a short range brawler. This is not a run up in your face. This is not a backstriker. This is a surgical precision machine. Electronic warfare. Any of you who were screaming this whole time, this whole time, yeah, yeah, I just noticed. So, the good news is that we do have a clan watchdog suite. So we only need one slot and a ton and a half.
we definitely don't have the slots for like a full-on warfare suite. So we definitely have to go with Clan Watchdog or the Clan Warfare Suite that I passed on last mission, which would have been better. Welp. All right. I guess we put the ton of armor back. Because <laughs> what else are we going to use? Oh, wait. We have a slot, actually. We do have a slot. Which means we can actually add another battle computer. Womp, womp, womp. If we had a battle computer energy, that'd be actually pretty cool. Uh, just increase the accuracy. Alternatively, we could also just go defensive, and instead of going Clan Watchdog, we could just go Angel ECM. Which actually gives us a shield of 5. Rather than the shield of 3 that we would get from the Watchdog Suite if we're dropping alone. Which is kind of what this is intended for. Um, but it does not give us the extra sight and sensors. Which, even beyond the sniper sight and sensors, we probably would want. Um, that actually does raise the question, though. If we're not dropping a probe on it, is the... Is the extra bonus to sensor detection and probe... No. We need the, we need the increased sight and sensor range. Absolutely. We need the increased sight and sensor range of the sniper sensor. And we don't have slots for... <laughs> we don't have slots for a clan active probe or another battle computer or anything. So, no, the, the definitely the better option is... Even though it's less protection, the clan watchdog suite is definitely better than... Anything else that we can use one slot for. And with one slot and one ton, we could actually then opt for that. Oh, no, we can't. Because the Watchdog Suite already has Probe. Uh, yeah, the, the insane bonus sight and sensors on the Clan Active Probe would be very nice. Just to make sure that we can always reach out and touch people. It has some problems, but this is potentially a very, very fun build. So I think I'm going to start by just installing the stuff I'm certain of. I think even if I get a, pan a pair of clan... Uh, I'll wait to put the BBCs in. I know they're going in. I know they're going in. But... That's, that's what I'm doing. We all now know what I'm doing. It's just a matter of doing it. So I want the clan. Uh, also, I need to see if the IFF jammer is somewhere else. Um... This is all definitely going in exactly as it is. Yep. And that's still 3.6 million. <laughs> Actually, tactics, if if we got another gunnery, a gunnery B, we would definitely do that. Uh, the goal is to have enough sight and sensor range that we can literally see people when they can't see us. That's the goal. And then offensive pushes is how we precisely cut away what we want to cut away. It's going to be fun once it's done, once it's ready. It is not there yet. But yep. Yep. All right. So now we need to come up with 900,000 sea bills. Do we have any XLs? I know we got some engine cores lying around. Um... First of all, jump jets. I'm never making a just bog standard 
jumper. I'm never make well. There could be a world where I make a heavy jumper. Uh, improved standard, improved assault. Yeah, good. Um, compact heat sinks could be very helpful on some assault mech builds. Mm. Wait a second. If I remember correctly, fuel cell engine forces you to use single heat sinks. Uh, we do have a we, ha we do have a standard XL. I'm never gonna pay to install a standard XL. Um, Let's, let's look real quick. I'm not obviously going to commit the changes, but just in theory, if I were to throw the fuel cell engine in, yeah, can no longer use double heat sinks, single heat sinks only. All right. That's not bad, mind you. That could actually be very good on something like... Um, a completely ballistic build. Huh. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, but if we get another 600,000, we'll be fine. Which, I'm sure I'll be able to find some stuff to sell for 600,000. Um... Do, do, do... Yeah, it's only 32,000 anyway, so it's fine. Um, and obviously we would need single heat sinks if we're going to run it, which is kind of a thing of its own. Uh, I don't I don't think we're ever going to have enough slots to safely run like double heat sinks when we could run clans instead. Just in case we have, like, a, uh, I don't know, built-in uh, radical heat sink kit. Radical double heat sink kit or something like that. Um, okay. Is there anything else we have that's super valuable? Not? There's so many other things we could use. Why would we ever... Well, mm, mm. Uh, active jams enemies, reduce jamming, and protect your issue the one, passive protect. This is just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. I mean, it's good early game, but like at this point, I've got so many. I'd rather have the minus six heat and resistance to heat damage and stuff like that. Yes, I know we have four clan double heats and kits. Doesn't mean I'm going to sell it. Uh, thermal vision? Artemis 2? Honestly, I think the plus one gunnery and night vision is more valuable than the Artemis 2. Like, if it wasn't also night vision, arguable, but I think just the night vision is better. Um... No. <laughs> Fire Control Mark II is the way to go with Artemis, and without Artemis, we're not really going to be putting a lot of... Uh... Actually, if we had a Mortar Mech at some point, I shouldn't have sold that. For the record, I shouldn't have sold that, because Aero Mech, uh, Long Tom Mech, Mortar Mech, any, any artillery mech of any kind would have loved it. Uh, Fire Control Standard Clan is just plus one gunnery. It's also not going to sell for much. Clan Pharaoh just is 
less slots and saves more tonnage and also gives case. So, yeah, get rid of those. Not going to sell the gyros. I don't think there's ever going to be a point where I use that. I'm definitely not going to... Well, okay, I say definitely. If I get two lambs that are both in good condition, I would totally run two lambs. I'm not willing to give up my mobility to reduce the melee damage I take. And have higher max armor. If I'm going to use armor like this, I'm going to get hardened. Which is just better against anything but melee. And if you're walking at 10% reduced speed and paying extra tonnage for armor, you're probably not putting a big zippy core in. So. Oh boy. Uh, I honestly did not expect to have this much trouble. Drum oh. There's a... Uh... I think we're past the point where we ever have 14 slots, so I'm going to sell five of those. Like, the odds of us actually having 14 slots, even in a heavy, is... I'm actually going to sell one more. <laughs> Highly unlikely. Uh... I mean, it's minus 25% structure points, but it's also zero slots. So that's interesting. Um, Groupie Hand, Omni Hand, Sensor Recon, Sensor Sniper. That's one we're never going to use. Prevents you from running an actual ECM. <laughs> and it's bad. It's good early game. So it's just, it's a very early game item. It's definitely not a late game item. And we are clearly, clearly in the late game at this point. Sensor Probe is actually still good because it has no tonnage or slot requirement and it gives you massive sensor and sight range. So if you're not running stealth, it's a good sensor option. Yeah, engine cores, uh, two ton Viber sword, never using that again. Although actually in hindsight, if we could, putting it on Tonka would have probably actually increased the damage it does in melee. Oh well. T case. Okay. Um, active probe, clan active probe, angel ECM, angel ECM. Eagle probe, C3 systems, standard ECM, goodbye. Um, guardian ECM, clan guardian ECM. I'm going to keep them both because the guardian ECM is better for longer range units. The clan guardian ECM is better for shorter range units because the clan guardian ECM is strongest when it's active and the guardian ECM is strongest when it's passive. So, yeah. Um, obviously, the angel ECM is better at both, but it also weighs an extra either half ton or full ton, depending on which one of these you're running. But as far as protection, like, ton and a half gives you one extra ECM shield, blah, 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 blah. I've said it many times before in this playthrough, but Guardian ECM is better if you're defensive, and if you're close up and scrambling enemies, the Clan Guardian ECM is just objectively better in every way. Searchlight. Does nothing if visual conditions are above 85%. And if visual conditions are below 85%, night vision fixes it, right? I don't know. I have questions. Um, oh, Warfare Sweet Quick Sell. Goodbye. That's early game tech. That's not late game. Um, Warfare Sweet, Warfare Sweet Mark II, Clan Watchdog Sweet. Nice, nice, nice. Sure. We only need 200,000 more. I mean, I think we're at the point where some cluster bombs are not going to matter. I think we would rather have a heavier 
bay weapon. Something something heftier. Or something that streak launches instead of just AoE splash. AC-10 ammo, AC-10 double bin, AC-2 ammo, AC-20 ammo. I'm looking for something special, but... <sighs> you know what? There's a chance. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, there's some kind of, like, crazy pirate or, um... Quick sell or something, like, rotary thing that uses heavy rifle ammo and, like gives the rotary gauss rifle its run for its money. I think, I think, if memory serves, it was something crazy like that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of machine gun ammo. Uh, long tom, sniper shape charge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of SRM ammo. Oh, cool, so we actually already have a double bin of MMS ammo, and we have an MMS Inferno. I wonder if that showed when I hovered over it last mission and I just was oblivious. That would have made taking the MMS more interesting, but uh, whatever. Thunderbolt tens, Thunderbolt fifteens, arrows. Okay, AMS. Yeah, that's all the. That's all that. <sighs> Which one's the Aryan? Ah, recoil of two, but it has. Plus one hit point per missile. I mean, if we're running SRMs, the way we defeat AMS is to just get point blank. Because if the missiles only travel one hex, there's much, much less of a chance to get intercepted. So, I think I sell that. I don't think we ever have two slots to spare on a one-shot weapon ever again. <sighs> I like streaks, but at this point... Well, you know what? It's two slots. It's 540 meters. Oh, 480. Whatever. It's not bad. It's it's interesting. We do have two clan gauss rifles and four gauss rifles. So I think I can afford to sell... Like, one Gauss Rifle. I'm actually very disappointed by the max range 540 of the Inner Sphere Large Pulse Laser. For 7 tons, it's... <laughs> um... Like, I would, I would definitely much rather have <laughs> Stop Those PPCs than, uh... Inner sphere pulse, la uh, inner sphere large pulse lasers, medium X pulse lasers also very nice. VSPLs are nice now. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Wonder how long I've been hefting that around. Uh, SRM four pirate. Bonus against overheating targets, so that's cool. Bonus crit chance, so that's cool. Same tonnage as a regular SRM4, so that's cool. Um, max range is a little bit shorter, though, isn't it? Huh. Also, minus one accuracy. Weapon <laughs> weapon damage varies plus or minus five. Wait, wait, wait. So that means the missiles do between five and 15? Plus dead fire? That sounds interesting. I've just never paid that much attention to it before. Yeah, there's a lot of things I probably would have used at some point. So it spends two ammunition per shot. Only fires and generates heat for individual missiles that will hit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I actually don't have a lot of weapons that I don't want to use if able at some point. <laughs> there, There is still a world. I, I, I'm not even joking. There is still a world where I will slap an ultralight rotary rifle onto a backstabber 
a heavy mech backstabber that has two extra slots and a slot for ammo or two to get behind somebody shred open their you know back with like the snub nose uh, PPCs or something and then unload into it with the ultralight rotor rifle there is literally a world where I use that in the late game this not so much I, I think we're past the point of just loading up like a ton of SRMs into a mech. I think if we run an SRM or two, unless we have clan SRMs, it's probably just going to be as like a secondary weapon system for like an energy build or something. <sighs> yeah. SRM twos are not worth the one slot, I think. I think uh, SRM fours or SRM sixes. Um... SRM 6s is obviously for the hard points, SRM 4s for the slots, because SRM 4s are only one slot. <laughs> Rocket pack, goodbye. And then... Huh, <laughs> Rack 10 Pirate. Oh, man. I'm actually very tempted to use that. Very tempted to use that on specifically the Anger Boda. We'll see. And then Rocket Pack 10. Goodbye. And we're still short. Wow. 75,000 sea bills. Um, so, uh. That's kind of it, huh? Handheld Flamer Sticky. What? 10 damage, 10 heat. Uh, falls off to 30% starting at long range. Max range of 120. Burning increases target heat generation by 25%. Generates plus 5 heat for 2 turns. 10 burn strength, 3 burn duration. Huh. Handheld medium rifle, 7.5 ton. Actually? It does block other weapons in the same location until ejected, but... That's not awful. Advanced, advanced Optics Mark III, but there's no way we're going to also have 1.6 million. Um... <sighs> I mean, I guess I could stop work on something. After all that time I spent doing stuff and things. Um, and AMS Flare is really good to keep around just for if you have an open slot with one ton carry capacity with like a combat shield or a melee mech or something. So, that's why those are still there. Oh, here we go. Goodbye. I would 100% of the time take... The LAAs are actually interesting because they do do through armor damage and could potentially cause ammo explosions and things. But specifically, I'd rather bring AMS flares instead of the boltons, with the exception of the LAA, maybe. Handle the rack two. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we got we got interesting stuff. It's just a matter of. Uh, getting it put into something and running it and seeing how it goes. Is there ever actually a world where I use Armored Cowl? No. I don't think there is. Oh, actually there is. If I didn't have any other kind of uh, cockpit upgrade, I would have used an Armored Cowl. Oh well. Uh, I mean, we don't need three Beagle Probes. They take so many slots. Like, two slots for just the Beagle Probe, 1.5 tons. I'd rather bring a Warfare Suite at that point. Com Suite, definitely useful. There's never a world where we have the slots to have six external heat sinks. See, this is, this is more reasonable. Two external heat sinks, okay. Six, not gonna happen.
like even even in the example of using the PPCs and having the uh, the external kits. Oh, we have enough. Cool, that was enough. Yeah, cores. Cores are good for selling. All right. So let's let that tick over. Cool. 57. <laughs> Casual 57,000 C-bills. We're in the middle of a flare-up. I'm going to go extravagant. Which is insanity. If the flare-up ends prematurely, I should have definitely checked before. Because if this flare-up ends prematurely... Okay, the Capellans still have four. Yeah, I might be in a little bit of financial trouble if we don't get at least, like, two more missions in. But, this is why I did it. So we can now have Chonker up in three days. The Stormcrow up in one. The Archer up in four. Like, this is so much faster. So much faster. Is anyone still injured? Yes. Holdra, six. Freitas, eight. Narf, eight. Wait, Freitas was... I don't think we had assigned Freitas to anything. Uh, Narf was running... The Avatar? Holdra was in the Executioner? But honestly, we could drop the Executioner with literally anyone in it and be fine. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to prioritize... Oh, wait, no, we already passed one day. So we actually only have two days before the next mission. So doing that would give us the Stormcrow for this mission. And then the next mission, we'd be able to use the Archer and Chonker. Actually, the next mission will be able to use Chonker anyway. So let's get the two days on the Executioner. Actually, no. The Avatar doesn't need any particular... Well, the Executioner build is finished. Let's just do that. Oh, it's 47 minutes in. Huh. Well then. It's fine. It's fine. So, two days, attack contract. Machine shop will be done in three days. Yeah, we'll be fine. But I think I am going to wait until next time. For now, that's been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.